Now you might have remembered from early on in the project that I had some torn grain after these boards came out of the planer. And the reason that that was caused is because everywhere that we have a knot or a little bit of this burl figure, the grain is no longer running in a straight line. It starts to twist and curl around, even uh, face upward, it, like in an ingrain pattern. And so instead of shearing off the wood fibers, what it's doing is actually pulling them out. It's actually tearing them out. So this is the bottom. Luckily, the top didn't have any problem with it. Uh, but being that this is the bottom and there's really nothing that you can do about it short of sanding it out, and I didn't want to thin the top down any more than, than what it is. So what I did was just filled it in with a little bit of epoxy and let it cure overnight. So all I want to do is simply take my card scraper, start scraping it down, and then I'll go back and sand it smooth. And when it's done, it'll be perfectly flat and perfectly smooth. And when we go to put a finish on, um, it's not going to reflect the light any differently. It's going, it's going to be nice and smooth, and uh, you shouldn't uh, ever even know that it's there. And again, it's on the bottom, so uh, you know it's just something that we're going to have to live with. Now one thing that I want to point out to you guys, had this been the top, uh, there's no way that I would have left this torn grain the way it is. Again, it's on the bottom and the bench being only about 9 inches tall, it's highly unlikely anyone's ever going to crawl under and actually look at it. But had this been the top, uh, we would have had to figure out something else. Whether it be some kind of an inlay to, uh, to hide these areas, or being that it was the top, uh, what you could have done was even dished it out, the entire bench, um, just like a chair would, would naturally sit. They, they're usually dished out a little bit. So that would have been uh, another option to fix it. But again, being that this is the bottom, we kind of looked out on that. And uh, the top, uh, I've still got a sand, but uh, luckily, no torn grain. Now I've done as much sanding as I can do at this stage. Uh, after we get it glued together, we can go back and hit it with some finer grits. Uh, so that's where we're at. We're ready to start gluing this thing together. And it has to be done in a certain order, otherwise it's just not going to work out. So let's go over to the workbench and I'll show you how it's done. So with a little bit of glue on our tenons here, we're ready to uh, put them into the legs. Put a little piece of tape on the outside to protect it. And once we get it pushed on here, we're going to add some clamps. So with a couple of clamps on here, what I want to do is make sure, obviously, that it's parallel and that it's also uh, flat down onto the table. So I know that it's flat, and what I want to do is check in between the tenons here. Uh, obviously, if this is not parallel, the top's not going to fit back on. So on this side, we're at 14 and a 16th. Over here, tenon to tenon, uh, about 14 and 3 32nd. So we're going to crank this one down just a little bit. 14 and a 16th, 14 and a 16th. So we'll let it dry and uh, we'll glue on the top. And now for the top. I'm just going to put some glue on the tenons um, just out of sight over here. I've got the, uh, the bench top and I've already got it taped off to where any uh, squeeze out will be caught. So I'm just going to get glue on all the surfaces, spread it around, and then we'll invert it, clamp it, and set it aside. That's pretty well seated. I got a couple calls here to go on top. It's actually seated pretty well, but clamps, of course, are always a good idea just to keep it nice and square.
Okay, so now after checking and making sure that everything is indeed square and uh, the way we want it, we're just gonna let it sit in the clamps for a couple hours and cure. about a medium coat of lacquer sanding sealer on, let it dry, uh, knocked it down with some 600 grit paper, and I'll wet sanded it by the way, and then did a top coat of high gloss lacquer. And with that, our bench is pretty much done. Um, don't know if you can really tell from that distance, but I'll get some good pics here in a second of it. But uh, that's it, it's got a great finish, and I'll tell you, once the finish really got on here, uh, especially on the inlaid man, it really just jumped out. So I'm very, very pleased with the way this thing turned out. So now that we're at the end of the project, I thought I would tell you what uh, I've actually decided to do with this. In the beginning, I told you that I was building this basically as a little decorative bench to sit next to my mom's gravesite. Um, but you know, as the piece started coming along and evolving and you, and you get to see the wood, and especially working with the wood as much as I did, uh, you kind of get a newfound respect for it. And I thought, you know, it's really gonna be a waste for this thing just to sit outside in the weather and waste away. Even though it's got a, a really hard lacquer finish on it, I mean, you're only going to slow down the inevitable. Eventually, the weather will ultimately destroy it. So, uh, what I've decided to do is actually um, donate this piece to the Relay for Life, which, if you don't know, is a cancer charity. And being that my mom passed away of cancer, I thought that'd be pretty appropriate. So that's where this piece is going, and uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, the person that gets this piece, uh, thanks for your generosity, and thank you to all uh, the viewers out there who've watched it, and uh, as always, I hope you learned something, and I hope it inspires you to get out and make something for yourself. Thanks a lot.